everybody. We are having technical issues all the way around tonight. So the lovely storm that was here in Florida earlier today is now hitting Paul and Faith. And Dennis had some sound issues, but we think we have got it fixed. We can't fix the storm. So Paul and Faith might go in and out. We will just work around it. So that is why we were late tonight. So below me is Dennis, Free King Flipper. And then Caddy Corner to me is Paul and Faith from My Reseller Genie. So if you guys don't know about them, they're going to tell you a little bit about their program. And tonight we're going to give away a month free to three of you. So don't go anywhere for that. And we're going to give away some other stuff too. So freebies. Hi, John. We've missed you. Okay. So I'm going to make Dennis big and then I'll make Paul and Faith big and then we will get to your questions. Get them in early because most weeks we don't get to all questions. So get them in early to make sure your question gets answered. And here is Dennis. Hi, guys. Dennis, Free King Flipper. Uh, used to be the Cape Cod reseller, but we rebranded. Um, just why fight it, you know? Um, I specialize in finding free stuff. I just have a knack for it. I don't know uh, how, why, but um, I'm always looking and I'm always finding. So why fight it? Change the name, change the logo and go with it. And um, I'm psyched to be here. Thanks guys. Perfect. Here is Paul and Faith. We will unmute ourselves first. Hey guys, um, I'm Faith. And I'm Paul. <laughs> uh, we're the co-founders of My Reseller Genie. If you haven't heard about us, we're a uh, accounting software built specifically for resellers. So think of us kind of like QuickBooks, but we only care about resellers. Yeah. And I'm also a reseller as well. So that's kind of how this whole shindig got started. Perfect. All right. Back to you guys. Back to all of us. <laughs> all right. So... Sue said she hopes all of us in Florida are safe. I hope all of you in Florida are safe. I know earlier today was worse than the last hurricane for us. Like chairs were blown off the porch. It was, it was pretty legit here earlier today, but we are all okay. It was so bad they canceled school today because they knew the storm was coming. So everybody was home and I sent my employees home early so everybody could be safe but as far as here rod you're good right yeah you made me show up today so i guess i'm good huh <laughs> he tried to come really early today I come now early today so yeah. told you to tell all him right that. i did i did have to tell him that <laughs> all right <laughs> denise has the first question she said she's a reseller newbie and she's setting up an office do you have any tips on setting up a useful office? She's currently focusing on smaller items, so she has easier shipping and storage. Cool. That's kind of my specialty. Um, I love anything smaller than a shoebox is normally what I try to look for and um, ship out, you know, every other day. Uh, my home office, um, I started with just a spare room. I'm down here now uh, in the basement. Um and I've kind of evolved over the course of time. You kind of figure out what you need, what you don't need. I would definitely start off with some type of desk, a PC, um, get yourself a label printer. Don't do the, the, the printing out with paper and taping it. This will pay for itself very, very shortly. I, I did the, the print out of paper and we're always buying ink and all that. It, this thing is great. I, I use a Dymo uh, 4XL. It's like three or four years now, absolutely trouble free. Um, get yourself in a section like this for a photo area. Um, I just use those ring lights and um, some foam board. And then, um, you know, a storage area to put listed items that you can find, you know, quickly. And then I even have an, a little area over here where I do testing, cleaning, um, you know, stuff that hasn't been photographed yet. But um, you know, try to get yourself a nice room. I mean, treat it like 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 a business and not a hobby, um, even if, if it is just a part-time gig. And um, get yourself some nice room, clean, organized. You know, be, be happy to go down there every morning and, and work. And um, you know, that's what I do. I jump out of bed and I can't wait. So, Faith. Oh, sorry. I I didn't realize that 
um, even if Dennis answered, I still had to answer. So, okay. Yeah. So as far as storage goes, so this is actually my stuff back here. Um, and I have downsized quite a bit because mo the majority of my time right now is spent on my reseller genie. Um, but I echo everything that Dennis said. Um, I will say that I am, oh no, you know, I'm not going to say that because you guys are going to make fun of me guys. Okay. No, I do not have a label printer yet. It's really, really bad. It's embarrassing. There's a really cheap one on Amazon for like 60 bucks that works as good as a Dymo. Okay. Well, listen, though. If Ray, the Nashville flipper, is listening to this, he told me he was going to send me one, and he has not done that yet. So I've been oh, waiting on Ray. Ray. <laughs> calling him out anyway um no but all all that said um i mean i don't know i i've heard from so many different resellers about how they organize their inventory how they organize their space um and as cliche as this sounds as cliche as this sounds um whatever is going to be well you have to figure out what's going to be best for you and your process and how much space you have so like we live in a really tiny row home right now um and so this room that we're in right now it's where i store all my inventory it's our office where both of us work um it's just kind of multi-purpose room so um yeah i echo everything you said and obviously i you guys might not think that accounting is part of organization but it's absolutely a part of organization so we'll get to that later. So, next <laughs> So yeah, everything they said is definitely on point. I would also recommend possibly getting like a, if you're dealing with, dealing with a, lot, a lot of smalls and I, depending on how big your smalls are, I like the file cabinets. You ever see the file cabinets that the really small drawers in like this big or the ones that have like, like that big, those are really good for storing, especially if you're going to specialize in um, a lot of uh, smalls. Also too, I do like the, the uh, storage unit, not that storage units, the storage containers that you can slide underneath your bed. So if you're working with a small space in there and you are working with small items, you can actually, you know, take that inventory and put it in other rooms underneath beds that can actually help save space in your office. I would say the biggest tip I could say is don't be like me where you can't like walk in your office and you have stuff all over there because you're going to not work in that office and you're going to become, you're going to work in your kitchen table or somewhere else like I do. Um, so that's one thing I've been doing this year to try to minimize the amount of crap I have in here. And so I can have a nice, clean working area because if your working area is not clean and it's going to be overwhelming and it's going to be counterproductive. So I would say start with a system right in the beginning. It's only going to help. It's going to be more beneficial, make you more efficient and more effective going forward. You don't have to go out and buy a fancy photo box. You, can, you don't have to go out and spend all this money on new stuff. A label printer is a must, I would say, of any, uh, all the resources I use. But literally probably for... My first 15 years on eBay, I literally went to CVS and Walmart and bought those like real thick poster boards. They're like like the peg boards kind of, and then two white ones. I put one against the wall and one laid down flat, and I had just lights on the sides, and that's what I use for a photo box. So you don't need anything fancy. The thing cost me like 10 bucks to make, um, but yeah, start a small. Don't don't invest a lot of money, especially if you're going to be a newer seller. Start by grabbing things around your house that you're not that you're not using, put those on. So you're not spending a lot of money on inventory right in the beginning. Cause you want to make sure you do like what you are selling and like what you're doing and just expand from there. Yeah. So for me, I would say get something to organize your boxes. If you're using little boxes, like you can see our boxes are here. Our poly mailers are over here. Like get a shelf or something like a storage cube. If you're doing smaller things, you might be able to put everything in like a smaller storage cube type thing. Um, I would figure out your workflow. Like we have our scale in a certain place. We have our tape. I would get it at like, well, if you're doing smaller stuff, you might not need a tape gun. We love, we have four tape guns. We love our tape guns. Oh, um, yes. Yeah, like, um, the label printer me and Rod were talking about it's like 60 to $80 on Amazon. It's really cheap. I have a Dymo as well, but that one is my backup. The Dymo hasn't failed me in four years. Um, and I bought it off of Marketplace used. So it has been around for a while. Um, like a pen holder for Sharpies and things like that. We write the zip code on the boxes before we print the labels. And... Figure out your workflow and where everything is going to go and then maybe think about getting something a little more permanent for it. I agree with like we have a desktop that we use for printing our labels and that's where I am sitting now and it is a lot better like I get more done sitting at this desk than I do on the couch. As I, I really don't want to admit that which means I need to have my butt sitting here more than I do um, and I think just 
as you go along because you're going to change how you're doing things and just making sure everything's easily accessible. Who was it? Somebody talked at Las Vegas about like the few seconds, like setting up systems and how much like if you have to go across the room to get the tape gun every time all those seconds add up and you could be doing other stuff so just try and set it up with your workflow as best as you can i have got to put this up here because it's crazy to me i don't even feel like i've had membership for 40 months which means john probably started like right when i started my membership so john has been a member of the channel for 40 months he has given away numerous channel memberships during this live on Tuesdays. He will tell you guys if you get to a certain amount of likes, he has done that. So he is absolutely amazing. If you're not following him, he's on Instagram as well as here on YouTube. Definitely give John a follow. He obviously has been around my channel for a long time and I greatly appreciate him. Three years and four months to be precise. It's crazy. I don't even feel like I've had it that like the membership that long. Yeah. All right, Miss Patty. Um, this is funny. She wants to. It's not. Fun, it might not be funny. Do you believe spirits, emotions, etc., can attach themselves to objects? And if you do, what happens if you bring them into your home? And you and the audience can answer as well. I try not to think of that because I. You know, I watch all those shows. I um, I watch all the you know the ghost things and you know and all that. I honestly don't think about it often, and I bring a ton of stuff into my house. Um, older stuff, antique stuff, you know, vintage stuff. You know, I, I just got a um, what is it? A Last Rites crucifix, where you oh, you slide it open and it's got the holy water and the candles. I just got one of those in, and um, I. I don't know if I believe it or not. I don't want to. I don't want to say anything or jinx it or anything. But um, could it po be possible? Sure, you know. Um, but I don't. It, it doesn't stop me from bringing things in. Um, I will not. Will not bring in a Ouija board. That's probably it. Everything else is fair game. Yeah, that's. Uh... Interesting question. That's an interesting <laughs> question. And your your answer is really interesting because like at first I was just like, no. And then like you said Ouija board, I was like, oh. Um <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't bring that into my house either. So yeah, I mean I, I think for most stuff, no, like I don't worry about you know someone's clothes that she's buying from Good Goodwill or something like that. Um yeah, I suppose if it's uh something that's involved specifically with like communicating with spirits that makes me a little less easy. <laughs> <laughs> so growing up, there used to be a TV show called Friday the 13th and the whole con, it wasn't about like Jason Voorhees mm -hmm. or anything like that. It was about a, an antique shop that was all these items were cursed and the uncle passed away or something happened. They ended up selling off half the item. The whole concept of the show was that they're going out and finding these items and bringing them back because they were cursed or possessed or had some type of spiritual connection to them. So I absolutely love that show. Now, do I believe that? I think everything has some type of energy associated with it. Because, I mean, just think of all the emotions that we get when we get finding an item for our childhood or, or the goodness. So to say that the items that we find doesn't have any type of energy, somewhat good or bad, it's hard to say. Um my wife fully believes in like energy, good and bad. She was sage her house and stuff. And uh, I'm the guy type of guy that brings in a Ouija board and hides it because she tells me I can't have it here. So <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> you know, so, um, but I have sold, like in the past, I have sold black magic books. I have sold tarot cards. I have sold a Ouija boards. Um, I've had, I will tell you this, a very interesting thing. When I posted up a YouTube video, with that, it was the most unsubscribers I've ever gotten. My and any videos I've ever gotten was because I had bla I bought black magic books and tarot cards at a at a garage sale. So, um, I would say there's a lot of people out there that do believe that items do hold some type of, you know, spirits or emotions with them. So, I would say be careful. Um, if you do, if you don't believe in it, if you do, but I would say it's a good question. Very very intrigued to see what Kat has to say about this one. 
So it's really funny. And I will say I do believe, I will also say one of my exes was a ghost hunter. So I used to go on like the ghost stores and we had like the energy level readers and we went to St. Augustine and that's where we did the ghost tour. And I will also say I have started doing mystery shopping again. I used to do it before Dalton was born and there's a mystery shop for the ghost hunting tour in St. Augustine. And my husband's like, you will not go. He 110%. He's like, you will bring them home with you. And I'm like, but, and like, I'm okay with it. Um, and I think it's cool. Our house, I would almost bet somebody has passed away in, um, I've seen like shadows and stuff. My house is a 1942 farmhouse. So it's a very old house. Um, and then Brad swears my here, I'll show you that this dummy is possessed. He absolutely hates it. And when it was in our house, he would turn it around backwards. So it was not looking at him. And I still have it. Harry Humstone. Some of you might know him. Harry Humstone gave that to me over four years ago. And so, yeah, and I saw uh, LaDonna said she has a Victorian morning wreath made from people's hair. I have a 1800s daguerreotype photo that I accidentally found a lock of hair behind the photograph, um, which that is in here as well. So I'm not like scared by it. I kind of think it's cool. Um, I don't think there's anything I really wouldn't bring in for that. Um, yeah, a lot of people, dolls, I hear that a lot, but I will tell you a lot of people also will put that in their title and their listing sell for more than other dolls. Mm -hmm. Um, and doves in the crosswalk says I have a cursed object. It got returned three times for no reason by the most bizarre people and I had to give it away to break the curse. So I, I believe in it, but there's no, I'm not scared of it. I would, I would, I, I think it's cool. <clears throat> Sherry said she found an African mask that looks real. Her car battery died, her air conditioner died, and she put holy water on it and it difficulty stopped. And if you guys don't know, Troy Mountain Man Treasures has a, he was on with us not long ago. He has a second channel and he does ghost hunting on his second channel. So if you're interested in that, um, I don't mind who says the spirits are all bad. Like I, I think like I've never felt anything negative in my house though. Like I swear, I, the, yeah, I swear I've seen like shadows and I know that, um, like I said, this was somebody's like forever home before we moved in. So yeah. All right. <laughs> We haven't ever had that question. So good job on a that's a new yeah. that's a new question we have not had. All right. Mary says she has QuickBooks for her husband's business, but didn't find an easy way to this is for Paul and Faith, but didn't find an easy way to separate the business. Plus, I can't import Poshmark sales. How easy is your program? Yeah, so good I good news for you. Yeah, I do have <laughs> some good news. Before I get to the good news, I just want to say like as far as how easy a program is, that's a subjective thing. You know, a lot depends on your background, um, how comfortable you are learning new things. Mm -hmm. um, how big your business is, how, how big small your it is, is, how many platforms. You know, there's just so many different. Yeah, there's there's a lot of factors that go into it. I will say, I think that my reseller Genie is getting more and more intuitive every day. Um, that's one of our big emphases. And kind of coming back to that point, uh, we just added Poshmark integration. Ooh. So now to import your Poshmark sales, it's a couple clicks. And if you're on our ultimate plan, they'll just keep importing automatically. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely recommend reading the article about how the integration works, just so you, you know, kind of understand what's going on behind the scenes. Or watching the video too. Yeah, or watching the video. But yeah, Poshmark is very straightforward in my reseller genie for sure. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and that's new, was just released less than a week ago, right? The, Pulling in the Poshmark sales. Yeah, so that's relatively new. So it'll import eBay and Poshmark automatically, but you guys can add other platforms to it. It just wouldn't be automatic if you're selling on other ones. Exactly. Yep. Yep. You can track sales from as many, many platforms as you have. Mm -hmm. 
Perfect. Laura said, how do you combine shipping on eBay and does anybody have a video on it? I don't have a video, but um, I actually shipped out today and um, someone bought multiple um, listings. Uh, if you go to the listings and you'll see, you know, it'll say repeat buyer, um, you know, click on them, go to the top and hit the little drop down box and hit, uh, you know, print shipping label. And then it'll bring you to another screen where it'll allow you to combine them all and then give you a, um, an option to put in the weights and all that. And then get, it'll give you an estimate and you can buy it there. The problem I'm having, I don't know if anybody else, now that I think about it is once I do all that, I go to my Dymo to print it and the label is sideways. Oh, there's nothing I can do to change it. So I have to go back to the main um, page on eBay, go to my shipping labels and go to reprint and it'll print straight again. So I don't know. Um, you know, if you just click on a bunch of things and then hit the little the little button at the top where it says print shipping label, it'll bring it to the other screen. That's that's the way I do it. Cool. Yeah. So I'm actually, <laughs> thank you. Um, I'm actually kind of newer to eBay. Um, so I am going to pass on this one. I started out um, mostly on Poshmark and that's kind of still my main platform. So I do make some sales on eBay, but it's not a lot. So I'm going to pass on that question. Yeah. So if you click on a waiting shipment on eBay and all you would have to do is click on what eBay does, is they actually combine them if people bought multiple items for you. And then all you have to do is click on that one item and print the shipping label and it automatically binds it. The only bad thing about eBay is, uh, depending on what you put the weights in for your uh, for your different weight on those items, you're gonna have to go and just manually enter the diff the weight because eBay does combine the weight automatically for you in those items. But when you when you do ship multiple items, you're gonna have different package sizes. You're gonna have you know it could be above or below what your weights are actually in there for the combined uh, shipment of those. So I would just that's the only thing you need to double check. So, but it's super simple, uh, simple, and uh, eBay automatically does it for you. Uh, there's a way too, and if you need to, you can unbundle it as well on there if you need to do that too. So, Rod, Vicky says um, Scott has a video on it too. Oh, sorry, Dennis. I, I was just gonna. So, uh, if someone orders a bunch of items and then yeah. pays, that's the simple way. I've been getting a lot of people buying things separately. Gotcha. Yeah. And so then they're saying, "Oh, by the way, can you?" combine yeah so the same concept all you would have to do is just click on click on them and when you go to uh ship my orders it would automatically should be able to combine those together for you because they bought multiple and then you have to go in there and manually discount if you want to issue them a, yeah. a shipping discount or something like that you would have to give them a refund if you want me if it's just a few dollars i don't yeah. um if they specifically ask i do um, if they don't ask and it's only a few dollars, I don't. I also hear lately because we have been having with buying these lots like the Lisa Frank stuff in the boxes, people will buy individual like Dennis was saying and pay individual. And because of the fact I have so much more of those items, I am voluntarily refunding them some shipping because I want them to buy more from me. And so I want them to be like, oh, well, she gave, she gave me a discount. I just make sure don't refund the whole difference because you have to pay fees on the shipping. So that right. would be my only cautionary point to make there is so if it's like ten dollars of difference i would give them eight dollars i would discount 20 percent off of whatever i'm refunding them and then people are happy but if it's just a few dollars i'm typically not going to but if they buy like five or six items and paid fifty dollars and it cost me five you know i'll give them like 40 bucks back because that's just a little and ridiculous the one thing i would add to that too is if you're having a buyer who's buying multiple items from you Send them a personal message, like, hey, if there's anything else you want, I can give you a shipping discount or I'll give you a discount on additional items since you bought enough off. I can't tell you how many additional sales I've got of that because someone's saying buying slot cards from my store, I have a ton of other ones in there, so maybe they'll be interested in those. So, hey, I'll give you a 10% discount, 20% discount. If there's anything else you want since you already bought multiple items, and you will get yeah. additional sales from that. So a little customer service does go a long way. I don't do it for all of them, but if someone's buying high-end items or buying multiple of those, try it and it does work sometimes so 
All right. We got a super chat from Lakes Girl Vintage. She sent $4.99 and said, if I send offers daily, will it go to the same watchers? I don't want to drive people crazy sending them the same offer every day. I'm going to guess this is an eBay question or um, I'll, I'll answer it as it's eBay. Um, I believe once you send them that offer, the, the clock starts ticking. Um, they can accept it or not. Um, and then I don't know what happens after that. If they just let it expire and they're still a liker, do I send them another offer? I, I actually don't, I've never thought of that. Um, I send offers every time I get like 10 or 12, you know, eBay will tell you these are, are available to send an offer to, and I'll just send them out. Um, I don't know what happens if, if you can do that same thing over and over again, but I think it's 48 hours. You have to wait, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, I was under the assumption that it won't go to the same liker unless you like change something with the listing or like reduce the price. Is that right, Rod? Yeah. So that's correct. So it when you send out an offer and I mean, think of it this way, too, is how many of people out there have you added stuff to your watch list? You got an offer and someone's not sending you that same offer every single day. You know, you're getting an offer maybe once for that. That um, So once you do add to your list, like Dennis said, you can usually 48 hours. And once that offer that expires, it expires. At that point in time, if you would end, end sell similar or, or end and, and relist it, they if then they start watching again, then you can send them another offer. I mean, at this point in time, they're not going to get multiple offers from that once you send out that offer. Now, I and that's the same thing, too, is like if you send out an offer and that offer expires and the buyer's like, oh, I missed it, you know, they can reach out to you, but you can't send them another direct offer on that. So I go in there and just manually discount my item for them so they can still get that offer price. You can, with the message, you can send them an offer, though, if they say, hey, I missed your offer of whatever. So if I know what it is, when they ask a question on eBay, there's a send offer. Mercari as well, if they message you about an item, there's a send offer button. Um, I have seen it go to the same people, but it's like a month later and it, they must have unwatched and rewatched. So it kind of like reset the system and you can't pick who you're sending it to. You don't even see, you have no clue, but I don't, I don't think it is the same watchers that are getting it. So I, I wouldn't worry about that. It should be all new ones that are popping up unless it's like a month or two later. And I am going to give you a dolphin. Thank you. Dun, 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 dun. All right, Denise wants to know what spreadsheet platform is working best for everyone. I don't really know what she, are there, are there spreadsheet platforms? Who do you want to start with? <laughs> it always starts with Dennis, works way to you, so pass Dennis. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I saw the face. I don't use so. a platform, I just use, um, you know, either Google Docs or just make my own spreadsheet and then eventually use all that for tax time. Yeah. Go to the experts. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm guessing this is asking about using spreadsheets for accounting purposes. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we would be alternatives to spreadsheets. Uh, something I'll say about spreadsheets is that if you're comfortable working in spreadsheets, um, they can be a very good solution. Yeah. Um, but you do run into like more things like having to maintain formulas, you know, you can break formulas and, um, you know, if you accidentally copy data when you meant to cut it, then, you know, you can duplicate things or if you cut it when you meant to copy it, then you might lose it. So spreadsheets are a great tool. I love Excel. Um, it is just He's one of my favorite things to work nerd. with. He's a complete nerd. I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if, if you're not, uh, if you're not comfortable in spreadsheets, I would say probably not a great accounting solution for you. Yeah. Or if you want like more automation, usually you don't find them with spreadsheets. Yeah. I mean, as far as platforms go, I mean, there, there's a lot of different resellers in the community who have created spreadsheets, you know, and um, usually they're, you, they offer them for free for people um, or they have, you know, done them at a very, very reduced price. Somebody in the chat saying my cost pro, um, but that's not a spreadsheet, right? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's a lot of variety there. Yeah, they are. Um, yeah, you can go ahead, Rod. I said the only thing I would add to this is as 
you can do a spreadsheet from the beginning. It's especially oh, we lost somebody. All right, well, hi Dennis. Dennis had a nice run. Um, <laughs> so I was gonna say is in the beginning. I, I know she mentioned it. She asked us the question earlier about setting up her office. So she was a, a newbie there, and, and uh, in the very beginning. Yes, it can be very easy for you, especially just the fact that because you're starting out and you're not selling many items, but as your business grows and just like they, they were saying, my research Jenny was saying earlier is, you know, it's it can become problematic later on. So I highly would recommend probably not even doing that. Get some type of system in place. Uh, my research Jenny is a great solution for you. They do help out a lot of people in the community. But I would say is you want to make, especially you asked about being a newbie, get a system right from the beginning. It is going to make your life a lot easier, you know, in that process. I am anti-spreadsheet, so <laughs> I I don't keep any spreadsheets. All right. I met, I forgot to put this up earlier. I saw it, and then I didn't put it up. Marsha is right behind John, and Marsha helps moderate for me every single show and every single whatnot. When I do them, I have been neglecting whatnot lately. Um, so, Marsha... I Appreciate you. So she's over three years too. It's so crazy for time flies when you're having fun. It is crazy. All right. This is going to be completely opinion based. And I oh, know what Rod and myself are going to say. <laughs> what cross posting platform is the best for the money? I'm going to pass right now because I, I do it old school. Dennis and said I, he is the best cross posting platform. Right here. <laughs> um okay so i want to say i'm going to say two things first of all um and i'm i'm not just trying to plug my reseller genie here of course my reseller genie is fantastic but know your numbers and know if you can afford a cross posting service okay please do that guys because <laughs> if you're not keeping track of all of your monthly expenses and your cost of goods um there's a good chance that some of you it, it just wouldn't make sense right now to pay for a cross posting service. That being said, there's a lot of fantastic ones out there. Um, and I'm not going to give an opinion except for that. We have interacted um, personally with a lot of the folks that list perfectly. Um, and I can just say from a personal standpoint, they're just wonderful people. Um, we haven't actually met the folks at Vendu or some of the other ones yet. Um, they all seem to have fantastic products. Um, but the, the folks that list perfectly, we do know them and they're just really genuine, um, wonderful people who seem to really, really want to help in the selling community. So I'm going to piggyback off kind of off what they said is, and it's going to come down what you can afford. And the biggest thing is the, at the end of the day, they're all good to be honest with you. Um, one is going to be better fit for you and your business. But anything that's going to help expand your business to sell it on the new platforms in front of new eyes, new people, is well worth the investment. One thing in reselling is we try to step over pennies, step over hundred dollar bills to pick up pennies all the time. Where we're, we're literally sitting there, we're you know we're we're trying to cut corners stuff that when if we spend a little money on these other tools that help us win our business, it can really you know, pay for ten times. And, uh, you know, Vendu is a good company. I know like ADHD, even those guys do use that. They have an online app. Me personally, I do use List Perfectly. Uh, the reason I use List Perfectly is one is their customer service is outstanding. Um, so at any point in time, you can get help for what you do. They also have a Facebook group that has multiple um, people in there that will willing to help you answer questions. But the best thing is, and I say this time and time again, Reselling is a very lonely thing out there. That's why you guys go on YouTube. We have these weekly meetups like this. It's it can be very lonely for some people um, because you know your spouses, your friends, your family don't want to talk about reselling. They don't have the same excitement as you. So finding like-minded people and be able to interact with them goes a long way. And one thing this perfectly does, and they're not I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that. I'm just saying this list. What they do is they actually have listing parties and listing groups where you can go in there cross list with other people across like saying at the same time interact with people so that goes a long way um and i've used them and i will tell you it has made me thousands of dollars extra this year or last year just for a fact of using this perfectly you know selling on macari selling some of my stuff that doesn't sell on ebay sells on macari or sells on posh or other platforms so it goes a long way yeah so i am like look i even have socks see socks i don't wear the socks um <laughs> I am 110% list perfectly. I have been using them for over three years. I agree. Make sure you can afford it. But I would say if you have a little bit of wiggle room, I would try it for a month because 
you should see pretty, if you're utilizing it, you should see pretty immediate results from it that will pay for it. Um, we made about 16 to $17,000 more last year on other platforms than we did on eBay. eBay is our main, we made over 120,000 in sales on eBay, but for, we paid 70, I have the 69.99 plan. They do have one higher now that will auto delist for you. I have not bumped up to that because I have my husband uh, delisting for me. And um, so that's what like, $840 and we had $16,000 in sales. So, I mean, it more than pays for itself. Mark put down here, if you want to try this perfectly, the first month you can get 30% off using my code. I feel like you're going to see, as long as you put the work in, you will see whether it's going to work for you or not. Um, and you'll see pretty fast if it, if it works for you or not, as long as you use it. And I agree with Rod, they have the listing parties. They had their camp list, camp, camp listing party. Yeah. Camp listing party. And they're very, very reseller oriented and they're very attentive to what we bring to them if we're having issues. So that, that, yeah. I, I can't, I have not used any of the others to say anything negative about them. I can't yeah. I can only tell you list perfectly is what I have used for three years. I do remember when I first started three years ago, I didn't go with Venmo be, or Venmo Vindu because they didn't have Facebook marketplace at that point. They were just starting. Um, so that is why I chose list perfectly over Vindu in the beginning, but now I just love them. So now no, you couldn't pay me. And I will tell you, people have tried to pay me to leave them and I will not. So, And I, I think one, the thing that we totally missed out on this too is, is that it's a great way to back up. So, you know, think about this. It's worth paying for the, just a small plan, just to back up all your items because all you're listening. So what happens, and this happened to me, if you guys know my backstory, I was actually kicked off eBay for like two years, like back in 2008 or 2009, some of that ballpark. I I got kicked off. So at that point in time, if I had that cross listing software, I could have, if there was other platforms at that time to sell on, I could have moved all my, my items just to another platform and nothing would have interrupted my business. You know, so one of the best things about List Perfectly is, is that you have all those items in there. So if someone returns an item, if you, um, you know, returns an item a month later, you can just go in there, you know, make changes, do adjustments in there, relist it. Or if you get kicked off the platform or Macari or another platform, you have all your items saved in there. So yeah. that's worth its weight in gold. Because think about this. If you have, Kat, how many items you have in your store right now? 60 something. Hold on. So imagine having 60, what, 6,600 6, items. 6,700. We're closing 6, in on 7,000. If Kat get kicked off eBay today, she would have to manually relist every single one of those items. So just think about this. Now think about your But they're all in list perfectly. <laughs> but I'm just saying, if you didn't have a system like that, and no, you'd have, have to go re-photograph and everything. Re-photograph, yeah. redo those listings. So this is why it's so important. So it doesn't, and I don't know if Vendu, you can back up all your items in it. If you can, that's worth worth his weight in gold in too. But I'm just telling you guys, having the peace of mind knowing that all my listings are backed up goes a long way. I have a yeah, question. and I wanted to put, oh, go yeah. ahead, Dennis. Seeing that I don't use one and you two do, um, how often do you sell the same item on multiple platforms? It's happened you know probably saying? to me this year twice. Um, oh, I shouldn't say this year because that's only two weeks. In the last yeah. month, it's happened twice. And the weird thing is a lot of times it's the same friggin' person. And I'm like, it. don't you see the friggin' pictures are the same? Yeah. Yeah, um, so. <laughs> so it's happened a couple of times. We end items. If you had their auto delisting, that would not happen because as soon as it sold, it would end. But we just list every uh, in listings every morning. So it does. But most of the time... <laughs> same person rod how many times has it happened to you i was that's exactly what i was to say so i mean last year it happened to me a couple times um out of those couple times it was the same person like they were buying it because they found a good deal on it and they're trying to get in, um on different platforms but i would say is i have all the apps on my phone so like for example like if i'm at the beach or going to a concert at disney world or something like that and someone buys something off ebay i just log on macari i click end the item i log on the posh quick end my item so it's real simplistic. I mean, think about how many I do that on eBay. So yeah. since eBay is the only one that will penalize you, 
if something sells on Posh or Mercari, I, I do the same thing as Rod. I have my phone and I automatically go end it on eBay because yeah. that's where I don't want the double sale. The yeah. rest, the stuff that sells on eBay is ended once a day in the morning for us. Yeah. So I mean, if, if it's sold in the morning, it has 24 hours essentially that it could sell on the other. And I'm, I'm the cat too because I mean, majority of my sales do come on eBay. So if I lost Mercari or lost Poshmark at the end of the day, it's not going to be detrimental to my business. So it's yeah. just, but I mean, but you do have that option to have your phone on. But you won't lose them. No, and I, I know, know that I because I had like a 50% cancellation on Poshmark and they didn't, they should have kicked me off. They did not. So, I ended yeah. up taking everything down because I hadn't kept up with it. I closed my Posh, took everything down and had my mom repost active listings and made sure after that I was diligent with taking them off. Yeah. Um, what happens a lot of times with Posh is if you have an offer out, Posh won't allow you to end it. So I was trying to end it and then Posh wouldn't let me end it because there was an open offer, which that's what I hate that about Posh because Mercari, even if there's an offer out, you can still end it. But on Posh, you can't. Uh, yes, so George you, wanted to know oh, besides the fee. Oh, go ahead, Rod. Sorry. No, face that question. Oh, oh quick thing. I was just going to let you know just a little Posh hack and probably many of you guys know this, but. Change um, the size. Yeah, exactly. You already know. <laughs> I, lear I didn't learn that long ago. Somebody yeah. that was on the panel with us told me. So now I know, but like Brad ending, he might not catch it. So when I was ending, I would. Um, but I doubt he does. We haven't got that advanced. I've just started him ending. So we can't move into advanced stuff yet. Soon. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so what, sorry for interrupt. What Faith was saying is if you change the size from like one size to small or small to medium, then it voids the offers and you can delete the listing if you catch it. So George said, besides List Perfectly Peas, are you paying monthly store fees? So the only other places that have store fees is eBay. Um, and yes, I pay it because I have 7,000 items on there and I would have ridiculous fees. So I have the $59.99 a month and it allows me up to 10,000 listings. Um, Posh Mercari. Oh, interesting. Well, we keep up with it. We keep yeah. up with it uh, pretty well. Just to address that, he had like 25 or 20, 20 plus cancellations. They didn't suspend them. They removed it. They gave him a warning for that. And that's because he wasn't. I think I've he, had that too. Yeah. That's before he was doing a deal. But he's still selling on there. No issues there. I was with him this weekend. Or Kat was with him too. We saw him. and uh, We were all with him. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, George. So, like Poshmark Mercari, there are no fees to list. I actually quit Etsy because of that, because it's 20 cents per listing every four months and we were not getting enough sales for me to feel like Etsy was worth it for us. And the listing is a little bit more difficult there. And yeah. All right. Let's see, baby. I think this will go to Paul and Faith deductions. Um, I mean, all of us could answer it really, but I think Paul and Faith probably are a little bit more qualified. So they're saying mileage expenses. What are other things like deduction thing that new resellers might not think of? Mm. Yeah. And now is the time for that. There is a lot. Yeah, now is the time. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, like kind of a, a generalized statement is things that are, for your business, like specifically. Mm -hmm. um, now, areas where you want to be careful about is like food. Um, d deducting food gets kind of dicey, uh, and especially like as a reseller where you don't like take clients or anything like that, you probably don't want to dabble with like writing off your Starbucks when you go sourcing. Um, but if you're going to like a, a Poshmark, or not Poshmark, uh, like a reseller event, like a trade show or something like that, you can write off you know, your travel, your hotel room, your meals, because mm -hmm. all that is uh, specifically for uh, business. Another thing which uh, is worth looking into is if you have a room in your house that you're using only for business, um, there's, there's a deduction that you can take. Um, I think there's like two different ways it gets figured. One involves calculations and then the other one's like uh, a little bit more cut and dry. Mm -hmm. 
But it has to be a hundred percent for your business. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's... No, like my whatnot room would like, we still, even though we have four storage areas on the property, I still have a room in my house that is only for reselling. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, another thing is uh cell phone. Mm -hmm. Cause like, you know, resellers are on their cell phones all the time. Um, so you can take up a, a portion of your cell phone bill and write that off. Same with your home internet. Um, you already mentioned mileage. Something I'll say with mileage is you don't want to double dip and do like gas car repair. You have to do mileage. either or you can exactly. do mileage or gas and all expenses. We have switched. Um, we now do gas because gas prices went up. We do gas and expenses versus doing mileage. And I want to, my accountant, what he told me as far as food is if I was out of town. So like if I'm going like three hours to go sourcing, I am, you know, not where I could get it from home. Or if I'm going and meeting with another reseller and we're talking about business, then I could. But if it's just me and I'm thrifting for the day close to home, I do not. I use my personal card. But like when we went um, to the villages, that was an hour and a half away from home. It was kind of double. I was an hour and a half away from home, plus four of us that are resellers had lunch and we're talking about it. So that one I put on the business card. Um, I have heard people say they do it, but my accountant told me no. Like, no, food, I can't <laughs> stop and get food, you know. So Here's a question, though. I think this is good, too, is what about people for Paul and Faith here? The people that are resellers that have maybe they have a small YouTube channel that monetize their YouTube channel. Is there any tips and tricks that you guys could potentially get for them writing off, you know, beauty products, writing off cameras, writing stuff like that? that are getting paid for their YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. You know that they're doing reselling through that. Do you guys have any tips at all for them at all? Yeah, well. Question. I mean, like if you're doing a, a review or something on, on a beauty product, it's it's a pretty easy deduction to make because, you know, if you were ever to have to justify it, you can pull the video up and say, like, see, I'm reviewing it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's hard to hard to argue with that logic. Yeah. But okay. other stuff like like I never and I, I think I would be able to justify this if somebody wanted like I never got my hair done before I had a YouTube channel. I actually haven't had it done in over a year again and I've quit. Um, so like for me, I put that be and like anybody that knows, if you see me outside here, Rod knows my hair is in a bun. You do not see my hair. If you see me in person, you will not see this. Um, so people actually sometimes don't even realize it's me. Um, but well at the event, so Paul and Peyton, I mean, at the events, I will, I will have my hair down. Um, but when I'm out thrifting and sourcing, it's up in a bun and my nails, which I stopped doing that too. I go, I, I go through phases of doing things just like I can't decide what I want to sell. Um, my nails, I was doing five whatnots a week where all people saw were my hands. So to me, that was a business expense because the only reason I was doing it was because my, I, it's like being a hand model, you know? So I, yeah, no drama colors. I had purple and pink forever. Um, I haven't got my hair cut or dyed in over a year. I have no nails on anymore. I painted them myself. They look horrible, but they look like Dalton did them is what they look like. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm totally random. Um, the utilities Brenda's asking, it can be a percent just like the room. So if you calculate the percent of that room, trash is another one. Um, cause a lot, a significant amount of our trash comes from our business. So a portion of our trash is written off and this is just for me doing it for so long and knowing what he's told me. Um, the big thing too, like Paul, I want to say to you guys to be careful is the big thing for writing off trips is what is your primary purpose there? So like when we went to Phoenix and we went to Vegas, our primary purpose there was for reseller conventions. But if I went to Vegas to go to the casinos and then I happen to go reselling, that's not a business trip. Whatever your primary purchase or primary purchase, primary reason for the trip, if your primary reason is vacation, then it should not be written off. 
But if your primary, you can you can schedule it where your primary purpose is reselling and go see your friends and have fun. But the primary purpose needs to be business, whether it's thrifting, doing videos, whatever, then that's what it is. So just be careful. Oh, it's time to give things away. And, and Paul is going to have to leave us soon. But um, Paul and Faith are giving us the three months of, you are only getting one month each, but three people. Let me clarify, because I, I spoke like that one time and somebody thought they were getting multiple months. You're getting one month, four, three, and three, we will choose three winners. So I'm going to share it in two seconds. Um hashtag my reseller genie and if mark or marcia can you put in like my code and stuff from my it's on my link tree too um for you guys so there is that for my reseller genie you guys will get three people we will pick you'll get a free month of oh and paul and face said it's the the highest plan right <laughs> Here, yep. So it has all the integrations that we offer, the most automation. Um, and speaking of deductions, you can track all of your deductions as well. So, yes, perfect. Very cool. All right, let's answer some questions while we are letting everybody um, enter. Wellman wants to know do we do our own taxes? I use TurboTax and I've done it for the last three, maybe four years now. So, we kind of, I mean, I got to give a shout out to my wife. She's pretty much my accountant and uh, she does all the work. I just hand her a bunch of papers. <laughs> so yes, I do. We, we do our own. Uh, we do not. We, we have a CPA who does our taxes. So I have a CPA that does my taxes. I will tell you this. I believed in doing my own taxes for the longest time until my one friend that worked for ADP who had dealt with, Tons of tax specialists talked me into trying it out. So I did my taxes myself that year, and I got a CPA that same year, and he got me $3,000 more than what what I could have potentially got. So the rule of thumb there is, yes, you can save money on accounting, but at the same point in time is the reason why you guys come come to the show and, and listen to us. You want expert advice. There's a reason why you to get a real estate agent. There's a real reason why you reach out and get additional help. You're getting an expert that's going to get you the best return on on what you're trying to do and protect yourself so i would never do my taxes ever again i actually pay a cpa to do my monthly accounting um i like our situations might be a little bit different i will tell you i probably get 10 to 15 1099s at least i have income coming at me from all directions our income this year is close to half a million dollars and there is no way in hell that I think I could do that myself. Um, so I actually pay close to $400 a month and then it is extra for him to file my taxes um, and so do our payroll. So I, I agree with Rod. Um, I, I, I think you should at least have somebody do it at the end of the year. I know most people can't afford having, you know, monthly bookkeeping. I just have so much going on that like I started making 2000 a month. I'm scared of the government. I don't want to screw it up. And I started paying my accountant when I was making 2000 in sales a month. And the cost has went up <laughs> over the years. I've had the same accountant. The cost has went up. Uh, CPA is a certified public accountant. Um, but a lot of times they will get you back the money you're paying them. Plus some guys, it, it, you know, they know what they're talking about. They know all of the little deductions. And I think that it is worth the money, at least for the yearly, at least for the yearly. And like, if you aren't doing crazy things like me, my reseller genie would be a good one for you guys to use to track it. And then doesn't it, Faith and Paul, it gives you the reports to give to your accountant. Am I correct? Yeah. So what, what I was going to say is yes to everything everybody's saying here. I mean, the great thing about a CPA or bookkeeper is that like they're going to be able to help you uh, maximize the amount of deductions you can take and all that for your business and um, hopefully get you a lot of, if not um, all of that money back that you paid them. Um, but one of the great things about Jeannie is that you uh, we give you all the reports that you need. 
file taxes on your own if you want to, um, or to hand those reports over to a CPA or to your accountant or whoever. So we have a lot of people who are kind of like in the beginning, uh, like they're, they're a beginner reseller or kind of more medium to, um, not medium, full-time, uh, a lot of full-time sellers as well. Um, who use primarily my reseller genie to track everything. And then they just um, run those reports at tax time. They file their taxes and we hear the best reports from them. They're like, filing taxes was so much easier this year. Um, so, yeah. And I would just add one thing too. Is if you guys don't believe in getting an accountant or you don't think they can save enough money, do your taxes this year. Take your taxes after you have filed your taxes. Take them to the accountant and see if say, hey, could you guys get me more money with this? And you'll be surprised, you know, uh, they may charge you a fee to, to look over it, but they, I know a lot of people that have done that. And ever since they've done it, now they use an accountant. So just something to think about. For sure. All right. Let's go ahead and pick three winners and then I will give away from American Bubble Boy and Giaro Pack. So we're going to pick three winners. Oh, Paul and Faith, how do you want them to contact you? Yeah, I will go ahead and drop the email address um, in the chat, but just email us. It's simple, support at myresellergenie.com. Congratulations. Let us know in that email that you came from Cat, okay? And then we'll just set you up uh, with a free account. So I will put that email address in the chat as well. Senior Flipper is the first winner. We're going to pick two more, guys. You can keep entering until we do the last drawing. I saw somebody else just got in. So let's pick the second winner. Dun, 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 dun. My flipping banker. How about that? Congratulations. Mm -hmm. And we will pick one more. Oh, the, the confetti's still flying. I'm getting a little <laughs> rushed over here. Mel's Bell Sells. That's like a tongue twister name. Congratulations. Oh, look, look, then I couldn't say congratulations. Um, congratulations to you three. Faith is putting in the chat where you need to email and tell them you came from me. And we are going to do, I'm going to do hashtag American Bubble Boy because he is who gives us, we're, you're, we're giving you a free tape gun. You're going to get a brand new tape gun that we said you needed earlier. So for free from American Bubble Boy, Joel gives us something every week. We have given away tape. We have given away tape holders. We have given away, oh, we gave away coffee. We have given away all kinds of things from Joel at American Bubble Boy. All right. MC Han wants to know, do you or have you ever done eBay for charity? Why or why not? And what are your thoughts? Uh, I have never done it. Um, I wouldn't be against it. Uh, but I do give away things that I'm, you know, that I, I either can't sell or, you know, I make, I make weekly trips to multiple, um, you know, church thrift stores, small thrift stores, and I, and I donate weekly. So, you know, that, that's probably why I haven't done anything like that. Um, but I, I wouldn't be against it if, you know, it's, it's a great thing. I just think, um, physically giving it to a, a store is, is just more economical than, you know, selling it and then shipping it out and having eBay, you know, do their thing with it. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm good with, with what I do. And I think it's, it's enough, um, you know, to give back to my local, my local uh, charities. That's awesome. Um, we're going to go ahead and pass uh, and cat if it's okay. Paul does have to go guys. So, so sorry. Yeah. Um, got Thank a lot you, of Paul. customers to get back Thanks to, but um, I'm going to get off too, just because Paul's got to use this device and then I'm going to log back in cat if that's okay. Does that okay. work? Yeah, no, that's perfect. Cause we're doing the giveaways. Okay. That awesome. works. All right. See you guys. See Rod, are you there? Bye Paul. Thank you. Okay. I don't see Rod. So, I have not done it, um, and the reason is because I also donate to local charities, but I will tell you guys what I have heard. I have heard that the bookkeeping aspect of it is an absolute nightmare if you use the program on eBay. So it would be better for you to make those sales, write a check to the charity yourself where it is clear cut, um, 
Yes. So if you get a return, you do not get the charity donation back. I believe it's better to choose your own and do it on your own. That is what I have heard as well. Um, I've heard it's an absolute nightmare that like you're donating all this, but there's no way for you like an easy way to have paperwork to show the charitable donations that you need to. Now, if you don't care about that, then do that. But I've heard it's hell. They don't give you some type of form or some type of thing to print out. They said it's like really, really hard. It's almost like I, I bet it's almost like eBay's making all those donations. You know what I mean? Cause like rather than the person. So I think it would be better to, like I said, keep it. And then write a check to your charity for whatever amount so that you're actually physically giving, not physically, but, you know, you yourself are giving it. That would be the biggest thing. All right. It's like donating through a third party. It it doesn't. Right. Yeah. So it's hard to get it. I think like even where we're like, even like where we're at, we still, um, the standard deduction is still more, even like making as much as we do. We like, even when we donate, it doesn't go into our taxes because the standard deduction is higher. It's like 20 something thousand guy. You would have to donate a hell of a lot for it to come off your taxes. Yeah. Um, Miss Susan says, I have sold about 20 items on eBay so far and had an item does not seem authentic return. Does eBay penalize heavily for such a return? And what are the next steps I should take? And can I relist? I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't look. I wouldn't well, but if they it. know it's authentic, the, the buyer's just saying it doesn't seem authentic. But if I oh, knew okay. it was, I would. You know, okay, so this like, this wasn't flagged by eBay. This was flagged by no, the, the buyer, buyer said it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just take the return back. Um, I would check my photos. I would check my my, my description and relist it. You know. That's, yeah, that's, I would. I would know because if that buyer could know more than you know, and they could be telling you it really isn't authentic. So yeah. be my my only caution would be very very sure that you know it's authentic so you can relist it but you need to know that it's authentic i'm not sure what kind of item it is yeah. but um I know why. Be very, very, I, but yeah, you won't I, get penalized yeah maybe ask them why dennis has a yeah. good point maybe say you know hey what makes you think this item isn't authentic right. and just try and get some feedback but ebay is ebay should not penalize you if ebay took it down for that that's a different story. Then you're done. Yeah, that's a different story. All right, let's pick the winner. We only give away one. So for this one, you're winning a brand new tape gun from Joel at American Bubble Boy. And you will simply email me and I will give you a coupon code and you can go order it off of his website for a tape gun. It will be completely free to who's going to win. Da, 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 da. Kathy Katie is the winner and then i'm going to go back and we're going to give away two packs of giaro pack mark or marcia will put in the instructions if you win the giaro pack you will get whatever you want you can get the daisy polys you can get the padded poly you can get whatever you want they let you pick whatever you want whatever size you want off of their website for free you get one pack and we're going to pick two winners um SR1, I would say yes, because a cross-posting app, even if you're not cross-posting, there's really no other way to maintain your listings that I'm aware of. You could keep thousands of pictures, but then you wouldn't have the listing, but the cross-posting app keeps your listings for you. So I would I would say yes, that Agreed. if you want to have a backup of your listings, that is a great way to do it. Um, Faith is not here, so I'm going to skip the My Reseller Genie question, and when she comes back, we will get that. Wan Man Show said, do you have a limit of weight and dimensions you try and stay away from? Love the name, Wan Man Show. Uh, no, 
I, I will ship something, you know, I guess freight is my limit. I'm not going to go and, and ship something freight, but um, I do a ton of receivers, um, you know, audio equipment. Sometimes they're 50 pounds speakers. And um, I use a ton of styrofoam and boxes and double boxing and, and all that stuff. I have a beautiful, not to plug it, but a beautiful Macintosh receiver and it weighs 65 pounds. And um, I, I'll, as soon as someone pays the money, I'll, I'll ship it out. So I don't shy away from, you know, bulky items, you know, bigger items, heavy items. You know, if people are willing to pay the shipping, I'll ship it out. Rod, do you have a limit for weight and dimensions that you try and stay away from? <laughs> well, if you saw my, my, one of my latest videos, I bought a freaking fire hydrant. So apparently not. Um, I've sold tons of stuff over the years, big blow modes. I actually got rid of the fire hydrant. I sent the Pennsylvania to my dad. So it's put in the back of his <laughs> car. He's driving it back to Pennsylvania as we speak. How much did that weigh? Uh, I would say probably 150 pounds. Yeah. Wow. So sorry, but the little, I had to take my dog out. My dog has not been able to go outside in like the last like six hours because of the storm. So. Yeah, so for me, I absolutely do not, even freight, I will freight items. Um, I have freighted Ethan Allen uh, furniture. I have freighted a $3,000 painting. So there, I, I will say, oh, Jesus is here. I see him. Sorry, Lori. Everybody beware. Jesus is in the running. Um, so I have changed with breakables unless they're small breakables i want like a hundred dollars or more if i'm gonna have to pack a fragile item i want a hundred dollars or more and i don't mean like small little trinket breakable things but larger breakables i'm not picking up as money if he is here we see you there um i didn't see him um i would not um i would not do really big breakables if they're not worth your time. That's all I will say. Jane, if you guys watched my last video, I am obviously not new. I am not new at all. And I had tons and tons of uh, listings and I screwed up and priced something at $29.99 instead of $299. And I, I, I honored that and sent it out. So Jane said she just made her first sale. She really screwed up. I thought I had a reserve on the piece. I am going to assume it's an auction, and we tell you guys this all the time. Please hear this. I would not do reserve auctions. Most people avoid reserve auctions like the plague. I personally would never bid on an auction with a reserve. So what you need to do is start the piece at the lowest amount you're willing to take if you want to do auctions. Um She's asking if we have any suggestions. So that would be my suggestion. I guess I'm answering backwards. My suggestion would be A, 99% of things on eBay nowadays should be buy it now. Um, and B, started at the lowest you're willing to take. Dennis, sorry, I went backwards. Yeah, I agree. Um, I don't do reserve. and In fact, I don't do a lot of auctions um, unless it's something, you know, if, if, I, if it's the only one that's on eBay, and there's a lot of interest, then I'll do that. But normally 99% of my listings are buy it now. Um, she is asking for suggestions besides don't being stupid. It's not stupid. We've all made mistakes. Uh, one, don't make that mistake again. Two, maybe slow down a little bit. Maybe double check the listing. You know, you'll get into a routine where, you know, you're going to, you know, list it, go through, boom, 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 all of the, you know, make sure all the boxes are checked. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's a mistake, you know, and hopefully it wasn't costly, but you learned from it and you probably mm -hmm. won't do it again. Um, we've all been there. So, you know, that's, that's what I got. Yeah. Um, okay. My whole screen view, um, got changed. So I'm, I'm next right in the queue. Yes. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah. oh, it'll go back after the yeah. giveaways. It goes all wonky while oh, we're right. in no, the you're map. Right. You always you're follow totally so. Okay, cool. All right, got it. Thank you so much, Rod. Yep. Um, so I'm I'm gonna pass on this one. Sorry, not very exciting mm -hmm. answer. Um, I do not do auctions on eBay. They just scare me. So I'd rather just do buy it now. 
Yeah, so I would tell you personally, if I see a reserve an item, it's a deterrent. I will not bid on the item. I will not because then I feel like I'm just wasting my time. Why am I going to put a bid in on an item that I can't win if you already have a floor set for there? Uh, the whole purpose for an auction is either A, that you want to get something for below market value, or B, you have a super rare item that you're hoping to get. You know, you, you're creating the new market value for it. Uh, that's the way I look at those. I would say instead of doing reserves, I am a firm believer that I always list high with a buy with a best offer on. I think that's 10 times better than a reserve because if you have a very unique item, you may not know what the market value is. You'll know when people start sending you offers or how much interest you get on that item. So if you put it, if you think this item is worth 500 bucks, you list it for $800 and you're getting 50 watchers on it. Okay. Well now you may have a really hot item, you know, or if you get no watchers after those 30 days, then you can end it. Now let's drop the price on there with a buy it with the best offer on. That's the way I do yeah. a lot of my business. And it's worked for the past, you know, 10 plus years. Once when they start putting buying now and our best offers in like 10 years ago, 15 years ago. But, I don't even remember. Yeah. I don't know. So I, once they start putting best offers in, that's what I do now with my items that are very unique or items I do, really don't know the value on, you know? So, yeah. All right, let's pick two winners for GRO pack, and then Marsha will give you the instructions. Beware, Jesus is in the running. Dun, da, da, da. Ryan, come a call in. It's the first one. Congratulations. And the second winner is look, I'm waiting for the confetti. I'm slowing down just a little bit. Dun, da, da, da. Taking Dennis' advice, slow down. I get it. I'm trying. I'm trying. Oh, Denise, the new Take reseller. You asked questions, Yay. you get answers. That's awesome. Perfect. She asked the questions and she won free poly mailer. So Marsha put the directions. They are there for you guys. So that is awesome. Congratulations to you both. And let's go ahead. Why am I, I like I have my heater on and I'm freezing. Um, so Faith, this question is for you. Um, they said if they're just starting out with buying and reselling and not much activity yet, do you think it's okay for them just to keep a record of the total amount spent on inventory and the total amount sold? <laughs> oh goodness. Um, it's kind of a loaded When we question, need Paul. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. It's I like, I, I can totally answer this. It's, it's just, it's complicated because yes, like any records are better than no records at all. Um, let me just tell you really quick, my experience the first time, excuse me, the first year of reselling for me, um, for those of you guys who don't know, I wasn't tracking Jack, like nothing. Um, now granted my, I was a smaller seller, so it was kind of easy to get everything that I needed, but it was really, really bad. Um, and I spent about three months pulling out my hair, trying to get all of my numbers organized and like ready for taxes and all that stuff. Um, so I would definitely recommend doing what, what you said there, um, the inventory and the amount sold. Um, also keep your receipts. Um, if you don't want to, um, if you don't want to keep paper receipts, take pictures of them and store them digitally. Um, you can do that as well. Um, and then, I mean, thankfully the platforms that you sell on will, will hopefully have records of all the fees and everything, um, from each of those sales. Um, but you know, as you're hearing all of this, you're probably thinking, oh man, that's going to be like a lot of different numbers to keep track of. So, um, if you're not wanting to like invest in a software, um, try to maybe find a spreadsheet or create one yourself. Um, like it sounds like Dennis, that that's what you do. And that works really, really well for you. Yep. Um, so yeah, short answer is some type of record is better than no records but really you you want to be tracking all of your the cost of your inventory your sales and all of your expenses yeah and i'll say too don't forget your expenses yeah if you only keep a money a track of what you spent and what goes out you're not keeping yeah. track of your mileage and there are a bunch of other things you could write off. So I think you'd be missing out. My flipping banker sent a $10 super chat and said, thank you for the gift tonight. She won one of the free months to my reseller, Jeannie. She said she's not lucky. Well, now you're lucky. So now you have to go get a lotto ticket. Um, she's happy to win and jumping into reselling with my reseller, Jeannie. So you are very, very welcome. Congratulations yes. again. And here, what do I want to do? Uh, here is your dolphin.
That's supposed to be Dalton, but he's not in diapers anymore. <laughs> um, Sherry wants to know if we feel like there is any disadvantage to selling old and new items in the same eBay store. Like old antique and new. Like in the vintage package. and brand new. Yeah. That's what well, I would think. I mean, if it's, if, if they're both things that somebody wants and the, you know, the sell through rate is, is decent and, you know, your cost is, is decent and people are buying them. Why not? You know, you could try to list an old item that nobody wants and sure that's bad or a new item that's, you know, I've got like toys that I've had here that I thought were great for two years now thinking it was the hot toy of Christmas. No big mistake. So that's a new item that um, is on eBay that, that I should probably just donate. But um, the disadvantages would be it's something that nobody wants. And then mm -hmm. you don't even want to bother, you know, taking up your listings and taking up your time and your energy doing that. Yeah, um, definitely learn the market, look up sold comps, listen to different YouTubers or, you know, people and see what they're selling. Um, because just like Dennis said, um, you know, pe people <laughs> simply put, people aren't going to buy stuff that isn't popular or that isn't going to sell. Um, as far as um, having like antique items along with newer items in, in the same eBay store, um, I don't really do older items. Um, I kind of stick to what's um, what's on trend with fashion specifically, because that's kind of where I'm uh, where my niche is right now. So a lot of people that do come on this channel and a lot of people in the chat are everything sellers. So you're going to sell a little bit of everything on there. So there's really no disadvantage of selling items. I would say the only advantage that you would get if you niche down to just selling like vintage items or those items, or I always like to use the camera example. If I had a store and had nothing but 300 different cameras in there for sale, you would click on that store and you would think I'm a camera expert right away because all I'm selling is cameras. So, you know, so there is an advantage to niching down to selling old antiques. If you're, I would think you're an antique dealer or I would, you know, think that somebody you specialize compared to someone who's just selling a little bit of everything. So I don't think it's a disadvantage. I think there is more advantages to, to niching down and niching down, however you want to say it, to, you know, to a specific type or those. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, we're all here to make money. So if it, if it sells, I don't care if it's old or new, I'm going to sell anything. Yeah. Yeah, and I I don't think there's I sell everything literally in my store. I think mo the majority of people if they're not collectors, they are just searching for the item they want. They're not going to a specific store unless like Rod saying he would buy a camera from a camera store, but I will tell you the people buying the same thing can search in your store for what they're looking for. So like my Lisa Frank items, people are buying two, three, four of them. They can search my store for just Lisa Frank if that's what they want. Uh, I at one point had two stores and it was too hard for me to maintain. I like one of them got neglected because then you have to worry about activity on two stores. And yeah, it just it didn't work for me. I know it does for some people, but for me, it didn't. So I, I don't think there's really a disadvantage to it personally. Patricia said, I receive offers on items I've looked at, but not watched. sometimes a few days later. So I don't think it's automated. Um, how do I do that? Send offers if not automatically. Is it? I'm guessing this is eBay, and she's looking at an item. Yeah, and, and then, eBay's picking it up that she looked at it. It might come up in like the queue where it's available for the seller to send her an offer, even though she didn't watch it. Um. And then she's wondering how to do that as a seller. That's what I believe she's asking. Yes. I don't know. Um, anytime it comes up in the queue where it says, you know, these are the listings that you have that are available to send offers. I just send the offers. Um, how do you uh, automatically? I, I don't know if you can do it automatically. I usually wait until it piles up a little bit and then I just shoot them all out. Um, I'm not sure. 
Yeah, um, I mean, get, getting a, a VA, a, a virtual assistant, because a lot of them will send out offers for you automatically. Um, Rod, what do you think? <laughs> so I think what Dennis is referring to maybe is there's because there's times that I look at items and I don't I didn't put it on my watch list and I received an offer for those. So I've seen that happen to me personally. So maybe it's the amount of time you click on them. Maybe it's something with eBay's algorithm that said that can allow you to send an offer to someone who's not watched the item. That I don't know. I do know, though, if, when I'm looking up comps, that eBay will send me a notification. And this may be what she's referring to, say, the notification about the item that you're looking at. So I'm sure this happened to a lot of people where I'm looking up a comp for, you know, a roll of toilet paper. And then he pulls up and you just randomly get, I'm like, I didn't add that. I know I just looked that up, but I'm getting a notification because I just looked that up. So that happens to me a lot, but I, I would think that might be what, what they're referring to. It's not. So I get offer. the offers too. Yeah. When you look at stuff, eBay knows and you'll get yeah. offers. We get offers on stuff we're comping all the time. Yeah. Um, so it's not an automatic thing. So the reason you get it three days later is like, say it was Dennis's item and maybe Dennis doesn't send out offers on Monday and Tuesday. He only sends them Wednesday. So he probably had that option to send it to you on Monday when you looked at it but he didn't take that opportunity to send it until Wednesday. So you can't do it unless eBay presents those offers to you to send. And I don't think they present it on all watchers because I have watchers on stuff that have never popped up to send offers. So I'm not sure like, and some, some people get mad. Like I just looked at this. I don't want it. Um, like, and I'm like eBay, you know, eBay doesn't tell you if it's a watcher or if it's just somebody that looked at it, it just says you can send an offer and you send it. Uh, yeah. Gina, a comp is when you're looking up to see what items sell for and how many have sold and how many are listed. Um, your price comparing to know what you have and how many are selling. And we got two super chats. Miss Barbara sent us $5. And I know what she likes. She likes the pillow fight with Dalton and my daughter, Brooke. So we're going to give her that one. All right. And then Miss Denise sent a $10 one. Thank you so much. And thank you for your questions and congrats on winning. I think that's a really awesome, perfect, perfect person to win. I'm happy you won. And I, oh, you know, I'm going to give you the whale. I haven't done the whale yet tonight. Here you go. And thank you to Gino. Gino's finds is who made all of the super chats for me. So I appreciate that. This, oh, did we both click? We both clicked. <laughs> D Marie says, if a customer is asking too many questions prior to purchase, does it worry you that they may be difficult after the sale and how do you handle it? I wouldn't necessarily say that they're you know, that that's going to be a problem seller. It depends on what the questions are. Mm -hmm. um, if they're the, those suspicious questions and you, you can kind of tell after you've been doing it for a while that this guy's probably going to be fishing for a return or a partial return. Um, normally, I'll answer them all. I'll refer to my description. I'll refer to the photos that I, you know, provided on the listing. Uh, and then I'll end it with, as, you know, feel free to ask me if you have any more questions, feel free to reach out. Um, you know, if, if it's a buyer that is asking weird questions with, you know, what if, how, how do I return this? And what if it doesn't do what you said? And what if it doesn't hook up to the, the unit that I'm trying to hook it up to? Do I need an adapt? That's kind of a red flag for me because my description is perfect and it's exactly what the item is and the photographs are, you know, they speak for themselves. And then I look and the buyer has zero feedback. That's kind of a red flag. Um, I'll normally, I'll normally just cut the, cut the sale off and just, I'm like, I'm not going to even go into those waters. Um, and on the other side, if it's just the person asking questions, I'll answer them to the best of my knowledge. 
Yeah, I, I think it also, like it, yeah, like Dennis says, it does depend on the questions. Um, I personally answer all the questions and I haven't had any issues, but I, I know of a lot of resellers who immediately, if there's even, you know, more than one question, they, they just kind of shut it down right away. So I feel like this is kind of a, a question where there's resellers who are very strongly opinionated about this. Um, personally, I haven't had issues um, and I, I, I answer the questions. So I think Dennis hit the nail on the head when it comes down to depending on the type of questions it is. Mm -hmm. I'm the type of person just like Faith. I'll answer every single question that you provide me. But you know when someone's fishing or someone's trying to set you up to get a certain answer as well. So, for example, if someone's asked me, hey, I can't see this you know, in the picture. Can you give me a better description? So you give them a better description. Then they say, okay, yeah, will this work with something else? But if it's legitimate questions that would, you know, maybe you just – a lot of times we'll post stuff up. We'll just take the basic pictures, leave a very basic description. So if it's something that's legit, I will keep answering those questions. But if I get someone send me a question, does it have a certain smell to it? Does it have, is there any micro scratches on there? Like I've gotten that question before, you know, like it's a used item. It's 20 years old. Yes. There's going to be little micro scratches on it, you know, where they're asking very specific questions that can go either way. Um, those are red flags to me because those are going to be issues that are going to arise later on after the item has been received. And also, too, I think it's really important is the, the type of category you're selling in. Like, for example, like when you start getting those questions in a video game category, more than likely that's going to be a, a red flag and issue there. Mm -hmm. um, if I get that questions in electronic category or something else, sometimes pe basic questions where people don't know if it's going to work with their systems. You know, so sometimes I'll even Google it and then I'll, I'll send them, hey, here's a link to go. You guys may want to Google it before buying it because we, or I'll, I'll send a return, I'll send a message back. You know, if it doesn't work, we do accept returns. You just have to pay for return shipping. You know, so I put that in writing so that because eBay can track everything that you do say in your, uh, your messages at any point in time, there are issues. But I will say, if I have someone that's being very fishy and asked me about my return policy already and like, you know, asking very questions and, you know, if they're, Sometimes I will just block somebody if it's if you have that gut feeling that it's going to be a bad buyer. But I'm also very experienced. Listen, I've been selling eBay since 1999. I can spot a scam almost a mile away. Where a lot of newbies, people are, will be asking questions. You may think it's a scam, but it's really not a scam. So I don't recommend that you guys go on block. Just go on on a blocking spree like me or Cat would do. Just go um, on a block. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's different though because we've been around the block many many times. You know so. Yeah, I agree. It depends on the type of question. Um, and if I like also if they're rude asking me questions, I'll block them. I don't want them to buy from me. If they're being nasty to me before they bought something to me, how the heck are they going to be when it has one little tiny imperfection? Um, mm -hmm. So the tone of the questions is a lot for me because and another thing and we've talked about this before get on a computer, go look at their feedback and go look at the feedback they left for other sellers. Yeah. That is hands down the, the biggest thing to do. I had somebody having a bunch of issues and went and looked and like the last five feedback they left was negative for sellers. And I'm like, walk, goodbye. Um, but if they're reasonable, like I'm like Dennis, so we we put pictures of measurements in 90% of our listing. I'll say, please see the last photos. They include a tape measure. Um, and then they're like, oh, I didn't see that. Most of them are like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see that. So that's something that's kind of whatever. Uh, if somebody asks me if something is like new, I will tell them no, because it is not new. Even if I feel like that item looks like it is new, I would never tell them a used item looks like it's new because that's just to me asking for a can of worms to be open. Yeah. Yeah. We had somebody, uh, shipping questions are kind of hit or miss. I actually made a $60 sale. They're like, there's no way this costs $60 to ship. The item was 12 inches wide. So I was giving two inches on each side, 16 inches to protect it. It was an antique fishing basket. And I said, well, it's oversized. That's by weight from your zip code to mine. If you are willing to take responsibility, I will put it in a box with no padding. And if it is damaged, it is on you. And he said, yes. And he said he was a reseller and I comped it very well. So maybe he sells in an antique mall or something where he thought he could get more for it. 
he didn't say like what kind of reselling. I don't think it's on eBay because I comped very well. I was like higher than some, lower than others. Um, and we still, I ended up putting it caddy corner on 12 by 12 where it didn't go oversized and I gave him the cheaper shipping. Um, so it was I can't pay them for shipping. And if I can figure out a way to do it cheaper, I will. Um, but if they're like a tone is a lot with me. Like if somebody's being rude or nasty, like I've had people message me at 2 a.m. and then get mad because I don't answer them in two hours when it's two o'clock in the morning. Like, <laughs> why haven't you answered my question yet? What's taking you so long? Okay, now goodbye. Um, like people like that, I, I will not sell to, I will block them if I get the chance. Agreed. For, and I'm glad they gave me the chance and let me know before they bought my item. Um, <laughs> Brittany said, thanks for the great podcast. What do you do when researching and you find a great difference in prices? So if I find something, um, you know, obviously I, I use eBay a lot for, for comps. Um, I will check solds. I'll even go over and, and check unsold. Um, I don't have worth point. Um, I just never paid for it and, and don't really need it, I guess. Um, Terra Peak is another tool or um, that goes back, you know, pretty far. And then um, depending on what it is, I'll try to go to another platform, just one other one. And just, you know, and it all comes down to what did I pay for this? What would I be willing to take, you know, if... If it's something, um, you know, if the margins are crazy, I, I don't know. I've never had that problem where let's say I pay $5. Let's say I find something for free and I go to a comp on eBay and it's a hundred dollars. And then I go, you know, I check a couple others and they're 50, they're 20, they're 10. They're all over the map. That happens sometimes. What is the condition of your item and what are you going to be willing to take for it? You know, mm -hmm. if I find it for free, I'm probably going to undercut some of the other people, uh, some of the other comps, because I want mine to sell first. I have zero money in it. I'm not going to try to get the very last dollar for it when I have nothing in it. I guess that that's kind of my business model. It's not everybody's, but it works for me. Um, that's, that's what I would do. Yeah, I usually take um, like one or two platforms. I try to do two platforms and search for that item on both platforms. And then I'll, um, you know, kind of go with what the majority is of what I'm seeing. Um, so like if most listings, if most comps are looking good, then um, again, like Dennis says, it depends on the price. Because if it's like $30 for something that I'm only going to sell for 50, like that's not going to be worth it for me personally. Um but yeah, I'll, I'll usually take, um, you know, the, uh, the information from two platforms. And then another thing is if you, um, if you track analytics, um, through something like there's a lot of different analytics apps out there for resellers. Um, I think eBay offers analytics too. I haven't delved into that because I use my reseller genie analytics. Um, but you know, whatever you use for that too, if you sell, a lot of the same thing or even some of the same thing like you can go back and look at those analytics too they you know they won't always be accurate for predicting what you know if it's going to resell again or if it's going to resell at that same price but i do think that looking back at past data with your store and given um you know the types of items that you pick up and how uh, how often you list and all that it, it can just be really really helpful information to have so it happens a lot, especially when you deal with like one-off items and, you know, where you may get a, a, a mixture of pricing on it. And a, a, there's a couple of things that, that factor in this. Number one is a lot of people only go back, eBay only goes back 90 days. So when you're looking at those comps, if you look, we're not going to tier peak, which goes back two years. If you only go back 90 days, someone may just not, doesn't do the research unless it's super low or super high. And, you know, you're going to have a big variation between those uh, you give the example when I bought those, I bought these Looney Tunes statues where they're all on motorcycles, Harley Davidson. Well, I looked at comps on eBay, they were going for like 50 bucks, 70 bucks. When I put up on Worth Point, I saw in the, in the past, you know, three, four, five years, they were selling for 150 bucks, 200 bucks, 250. So that's what I list them at. It took me about two or three months to start selling them, but I did sell them. I got max amount of money for that. So just because, you know, comps are over the place, it's just sometimes people don't know how to price things. Second reason that does happen is, when when I am looking for research and I am and I see a fluctuation in price, look at the time that those sales happen. So, for example, if I, if I have Christmas items 
in December, there was a, in November, December, they're going to sell higher than even though Christmas items sell all year round, they're going to sell for a premium in those months. So you could have just hit during the peak season for those. Um, same thing with sports, you know, sports cards are going to sell great during the season and the off season, you're going to see typically see a dip because they're out of, out of season. So that's another one that does really factor in there too. And then also to the condition. So you may have one item that is at, you know, perfect condition. It may sell for 150 bucks where everything else is selling for a hundred dollars or selling for $75 because the condition of that one looks brand new and everyone else looks used. So always factor in the condition that you may have something that's just pristine where people will pay a premium for that. And also too, if you see items that are listed there and the cops are kind of over the place and you have something that is pristine, that's the best condition to any other comps. I always price mine higher than those normal comps with maybe a best offer on there because people will pay up to get a good product. So you know, there's a lot of reasons why, but I, those are my three things I do use all the time where my comps are over the place. That's good. Yeah. And I'm a big fan of worth point. Um, worth point goes back 10 years and I want to pop this up because this is just a couple of questions down. Um, and Linda saying use worth point for the value of collectibles yeah, if you have stuff like that, one for a hundred, one for a thousand, and just that one item, let's say you find out on worth point that the one thousand is a more accurate and you see a history over ten years, you just paid for worth point for the whole year by not listing your trombone for a hundred dollars because okay. worth point's about twenty seven dollars a month. So I have found one item will a lot of times pay for the whole year of worth point. So I recommend worth point. If you are getting a lot of rare one-off items that haven't been sold in years. So you're not going to find them on eBay. You're not going to find them on therapy. I personally get a lot of items like that. Worth point would be the go-to and to find out if you need it, if you go on worth point, you can see if your items there listed, you can't see the price it's sold for unless you pay, but you would at least be able to go on there and see, Oh yeah, it's there. I can't see the prices. They do a seven day, seven free lookup. So you could use it for seven items. And that way you see for me, just like that fish basket I was just talking about, there are some listed at 20 and 30. To me, when I looked at them, they looked newer. They didn't look like true antiques, even though they were listing them as that. I knew mine was. So I priced towards the higher end, but not the highest. And it sold in under a week. And that guy mm -hmm. said he was reselling it. And again, I felt comfortable where I priced it. And what I paid for it. So, and I always say, like, if I underprice, like Dennis is getting stuff for free. So if I get it for free and I sell it for $50, I'm happy. If Rod knows more than me about that toy and he goes sells it for 500 am I mad at him? No, good for him. He knows more than me. You know, I'm happy I got 50 bucks off a free thing. If he makes 450 good for him, you know? It's okay to be the middleman. We don't always have to be, we don't have to sell to the end user every single time. Right. It's There's many resellers that make a complete living being wholesale or just reselling to other resellers. You know, that's their business model. And that's perfectly fine. You know, there's enough, there's enough food for all of us to eat. That's a lot of people don't realize. And you don't always have to sell directly to the end user. 100%. Yeah. And that that's okay. I mean, you learned at that point yeah. if you figured it out. Kelly wants to know, and Faith, I don't know if you know this. Um, I, I think I do, but uh, there are two accounting methods, inventory and cash in and cash out. Do you have to declare the method or is it once you're filing? I believe it's once you're filing that method is set. Yeah, yeah that, that's my understanding as well. Um, so typically, so yeah, for anybody who doesn't know um, what, uh, what Kelly's talking about is um, there's two one of two ways that a reseller will track their inventory. It's either the um, the cash inventory method or the accrual inventory method. And the accrual inventory method, simply put, um, is that you are going to, um, you're going to attach your item costs uh, to the actual inventory and, um, and you're going to deduct it when that item sells. With the cash inventory method, um, you're going to be doing it, oh gosh, I just blanked. Paul's gonna have, when you, you know buy what, it, you count the money yeah. when you buy it. It's money thank, in, money out. Exactly. All the money you, you so spent, much. all the money that's out. Exactly. Um, you so and much. you yes. can only change it once. 
in the in your business. So if you have it money in, money out, you go to inventory, I think you can change back once and then it's locked. Like you cannot so, change it again. Yeah. So you my my understanding is that you can change it. It's just gonna be a real big pain in the butt. So if you're trying to figure out which one you want to be, the cash inventory method or the accrual inventory method, meet with an accountant, meet with a CPA, um, figure I, out what there's a to limit do. too. You can't like go back and forth and back and forth and yes, back and yes, forth. Yes, yes, Yeah, yeah. But there are some people who start one way and then you know later on they realize yeah, oh, and I want to switch. switch to that. Right. Um, I will say that the oh sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, what, did all these balloons just pop up on her screen? Yeah, yeah they okay, did. Okay, I thought I, I was seeing stuff. Seconds. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> hey! I, 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 I think that that's nice. a text or something, and then, like. No, no, all right. Yeah. yeah. Come from the <laughs> Sorry to mess you up. I was like, no, 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 cool. you're totally good. I, I was just going to say, because a lot of people are like, you know, what's the benefit to doing one versus the other? With the accrual inventory method, it's going to take a little bit more time, but it's going to be a lot more accurate. Well, I shouldn't say because that makes it sound that the cash inventory method is not accurate. Um, you're going to have a I lot. I mean, more you don't detail. know details. Yeah. Exactly. Like, yeah. Like, so if you're not tracking, you don't have to do stress. inventory. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So the cash inventory method, it will be less time, but you're not going to have like all the helpful information about your business. So again, it just it kind of depends. Um, you know, if you're making two hundred thousand dollars a year on a platform or something, um, it might be too much for you to do the accrual inventory method. So, but yeah, I will tell you, you from doing Mark two not your not your dad's CPA course, he says I should be doing accrual i love you and Mark. i'm not he says <laughs> yeah. if it, you're bigger I, that you should be doing inventory okay yeah but we, my accountant my say. accountant said do cash mm -hmm. sure and people yeah different accountants will say different things um accrual is is very very well accepted by the irs and it's not that the irs doesn't accept the cash um, accounting method but the the accrual one has been around for much longer um so it's kind of a tried and true method Squirrely reseller sent four ninety nine super chat and said, "Thank Cat Rod and guests, thank you for being kind. I had a reseller be really nasty to me today. How much do you lower your price to move merchandise extremely quick? So if you have something you want to get rid of quick, where would you put it, like market value wise? I'm wondering if the reseller was trying to get you to sell it cheap. You should give us some information about that. This is the same one that." lost her who got laid off within without notice it is um, yes yeah okay well if it's a nasty i had a reseller be nasty today so I, i'm wondering if it's something they were trying to sell to this person maybe I, that's I'm what i'm thinking they were trying to get something cheap so they were not nice to her because yeah. she not, wouldn't give them the deal that she, yeah, they wanted a block a little, right away just a little follow up in the chat here so we can give a little more context to the question yeah. there yeah. on that part but what do you do des to move your your lower price items to move your merchandise quickly um i do coupons i do sales i do standard promotions and eventually I get down to a point where i uh, it's it's not even worth you know the the packaging you know it's not even worth the uh, poly mail it and then it'll I'll go all into a box and then it goes directly to um charity donations uh thrift store and that's it faith make a heart i well okay so i'm actually holding my phone here let's yeah, see if I can do this. there we go is this gonna work? Oh, it Stop. didn't work. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you had a nice run. It was, it's <laughs> so it's some hand gesture you did made the balloons come up. Wait, really? oh, I did that. I did the balloons. Yes, yeah, she said with the new iPhones, <laughs> it makes talking? gestures come up. So okay. I think when you do the heart, it like it it should make hearts yeah. come. All right, it's guys. okay. Well, Don't I, drop I, this I will again. work on that. I will work on it, but I only have wow. one hand right now. Here, let me try to do the balloons again. Wax on, wax off. Wax on. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, okay, yeah, so, so how I, much do you lower, Faith? Okay, I usually will send offers for 20%. This is on Poshmark, though. With eBay, I just do whatever my, my default is right now because, again, I'm not as much on eBay as I am on Poshmark. But um, if I really, really want to move stuff, I will send coupons for 20%, and um, I think it's four forty nine shipping. Um, or I will drop the price by 10% and everybody will get um, notifications. So, um, yeah, that's usually how far I'll go. Um, yeah. 
So I think it really comes down to what your buy cost is because you make the money on the buy, not the sell. Um, if you have a low buy cost, you can really reduce as much as possible. Like I literally just sold a pair of shoes. I had listed for 40 bucks. I paid $3 for them and someone sent me an offer for 20 bucks and they were in my store for three months. So I just sold them. I don't care. Just when the merchandise gone. So, you know, I would say the best thing to do, if you're trying to move merchandise quickly, run it a sale on your store. Anytime I run a sale in a store, I get a ton of watchers and then you can send them a higher offer once the sale ends. Um, that's a fast way for me to mer move merchandise within a week is to do that. Um, I would say, you know, for me, I have a following or whatnot now, so I would just push items to whatnot to really just try to move items out. Uh, live selling platforms. If I need to move merchandise real quick, lower my price, Facebook or Facebook marketplace or offer up. You put mm -hmm. stuff up there fast, you will get buyers at that day that will come there to pick it up. Good. Yeah. Uh, I was also going to add to, um, I've had a lot of success with like buying reseller lots from Mercari. A lot of people will just put all their stuff in lots there. Um, and they seem to rank pretty well. Like when you, like when you list a lot um, and you search for it, they, they seem to rank pretty well in the search engine. So yeah, eBay also has a wholesale section on there. And a lot mm -hmm. of people don't actually read, know that. Poshmark does too. Yeah. Yeah, you can go on there and actually put your massive lots up for that. But I mean, if you're looking to move merchandise quick, resellers love to buy in bulk because that's less sourcing and less work we have to do to go out to get new items. So, you know, you bundle things together in big package deals and they will pay up for items. But mm -hmm. the fact that they're getting multiple quantity of, the, of those items, for me, I would, you know, I would pay up just to get a big bulk of stuff but at a discounted rate because I can make money off it, you make money off it, and you're moving merchandise. So always keep that in mind. Faith, they said do thumbs up. This is, like, interesting me. It's, hang on. I'm trying to get, like, on a – there we go. Come on. Come on. Come on. What is wrong with my thumb? Why is it oh, – oh, oh, there it is. Is. <laughs> What if I do this? <laughs> this is so crazy. Oh. What? Wow. wow. Wait, First time that was cool. Thumbs down on her show. Why? How did she make the balloons? I don't know. Whatever you're doing earlier, you're talking with your hands, and all these balloons start going. But I, I could have done yeah. is this. I really, really, yeah. I want to try to do the heart again. Hang on, come on. It's I need like a, a blank. Did you do the, Did the heart go through earlier? Oh, there it is. There it is. Love you guys. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, okay. welcome to iPhone 101, everybody. We're, we're hey, advertising for iPhone now because I'm amused with this. Um, <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> So I would say the thing you have to be worried about moving it extremely quick on eBay and that other resellers might be nasty to you about. And I will tell you, I got some comments on mine. Oh, they want you to do a peace sign now. Um, I, I no, said I accepted an offer of, oh, they because they wouldn't, that. he doesn't. Okay. Well, we don't want to be your friend anyways, dude. Peace out. Right. Like yeah, if anybody's don't. nasty to me, I block them, be it on YouTube. And if you've known me for a while on YouTube, like you don't get a second chance to be nasty to me. You're blocked and I will never see you again. The ever. worst yeah. business practice I, to do in this community is not to be friends with resellers because being knowing what other people sell and being friends with other resellers, they'll send you leads. They'll send you, you know, merchandise. So if you want to buy out their stuff, I mean, it's great to network with other resellers. So I would block them personally um but i like if stuff is new whatever i priced it at i won't do less than 10 to 15 percent off i got people hating on me because i accepted a 110 dollar offer a week after i listed something for 180 um you're not blocked i love you i wore your shirt earlier and it has holes and i told you i needed a new one three months ago so maybe i should block you um i love you scott um so I, but here's the thing. The last one sold for 70 and the only other one sold was for 200. I accepted 110 and they said, you are driving down the market they, on my video. When I said, I said no, because the only one that sold in the last 10 years sold for 76. So actually. The suspense is killing me. What, what actually, <laughs> actually. Do more of this. <laughs> oh, all right, Faith, entertain us, please. 
Give what us a thumbs up. What, what are the fireworks? Is it two thumbs up? Is that right? Two thumbs up oh. for fireworks. Cat, you're back. You were frozen, and we didn't hear the end of the story. Oh, oh. Cool. <laughs> okay, that was amazing. Simple That's things. Paul, Paul's in the hate us night because she's been laying in bed, and all she's been doing is just messing with her iPhone. Yeah. He's like, what are you doing? I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> Cat, Freezing again? again? Yes. Yeah. yes. So, so whenever I'm frozen, it's taking me and you off the screen and showing me both of us are gone and only Faith and Dennis. So All right, right, we have now. Your story. You 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 the, you said something about. No, oh, they just commented. Know. No, so the the only other one listed on eBay was at two hundred. There were none sold in ninety days. The only one that sold sold for seventy six, like three years ago. I saw on Workpoint. I sold it for one ten. So as far as I see, I increased the market. I didn't lower it just because somebody has it listed at two hundred doesn't mean that's a friggin' value. You know, if they had looked at worth point, they might have priced it at 76 and then I raise the value. So I, if stuff is new for me, I'm, I'm not going to go down, but I'm also not in your situation where I'm trying to move stuff quickly. I'm hard headed and I'll hold on to it for years if I think it's worth what I'm asking. You know, I'm not trying to get it that fast. In this case, I was like, and eh, cause I knew that worth point comp was 76, but I also knew there was another at 200 and I decided I paid 20 bucks. I'm going to take 110 and make a quick 80 bucks, you know? And it also depends on how many sales I've had for the day. Today and yesterday have been slower days for me, so I've taken offers a little bit lower than I normally would. Like if it was a $500 day, a lot of the offers I got today would not have been accepted because I'm trying to kick that algorithm in by getting sales to just make it wake up a little bit, you know? All okay. right. I'm going to answer this real quick, and then we're going to answer one more question. Um, before you need an eBay store, Gina, typically 250 because you can get 250 for free. Or if you want to run a sale on your items, you would need to have a store as well. Even if it's the lowest, $599 or $999. Once you stop getting free listings, it then becomes more financially. I don't know what word I want. Anyway, 250 typically, typically. All right. Juan wants to know, how do you calculate how much you pay yourself and how much you reinvest on the business? I guess I got a different scenario, wife, three kids, mortgage. So I, we have a set amount that goes to that, you know, every, every I get paid weekly by eBay. Um, that's the, what I chose to do. It's the closest to a normal job. So at the, I, you know, it comes out Wednesdays. At Wednesday, I know exactly how much is going to go towards the house account to pay the bills. What I have left over, whether it be a great week, whether it be a slow week, that's what I have money, you know, the money to, to play with and to source. Sometimes I'm going out sourcing for larger items. Sometimes I'm nickel and diamond and, and trying to get the free piles and, and that type of stuff um you know but it's never zero you know there's always room to grow the business um and, and it just works for us and then um i will save some of that money every single week and that goes to me maybe going to buy a storage unit or a pallet of you know mixed media video games that type of stuff so the money is always going to be available for me to source. It just fluctuates um, week to week. It's going to change so much from person to person and based on your situation. Yeah. And I really think it's, um, unless you don't have a system in place, um, you should talk to your accountant or CPA. I was just about to say that it's going to based on, because the most what, ultimate goal is you want to try to write off as much stuff as possible for through your business. So, you know, there are some items that you use personally that can be written off through your business, something that CPA or accountant will have that conversation with you. But the ultimate goal is you want to try to pay yourself maybe the say the least amount of money. So you you want to reduce the amount of money that you're making profits. So that way, make sure you cover all your bills and everything. But that way, you're paying less taxes on, you know, you're giving away less money for that and re 
using those funds for your business or for other things that you can write off. Uh, so it's going to it's going to vary per person, I would say, based on that. Yeah, and I you I used to have a system when before I had all of the craziness that I have now. Um, if I was smart, I would probably do it like Dennis does, but I don't. Um, so for us, because I have payroll, which varies week to week as far as how much is going out. So there are some weeks I don't pay myself. Um, if we have a bad week, going to get paid. Um, but on paper, my accountant has it where my husband and myself on paper, we get a check every week. We are paying into social security every week. We are paying into FICA, but I basically pull enough to pay bills is, uh, is still all I do and leave the rest in the business account. I also have a business savings account. Whenever I pay myself, I transfer 20% of that into my savings account to cover taxes Plus, I'm paying in for Social Security and FICA, so I'm kind of double covering. And I use my lovely tax savings because a lot of times I don't need it. However, the last two years I have because um, we've made quite a bit of money. But um, I could use that tax saving for a big buy if I needed to because I have, you know, a large amount in there for tax. Now, would I use it in April? Probably not. Would I use it now when I know this is a good lot? Like the boxes. I bought them for $4,000. I knew I would have that money back fast. We have made almost $20,000 on them in two months. That's a buy I would make out of there if I had to. I, did, I didn't have to. But um, I, yeah, I always have basically just paid myself enough to pay my bills. Me too. And the rest goes into business. So it varies. And like I said, sometimes it's nothing. We were losing money on whatnot for two months and I was hardly paying myself anything. Um, so, you know, and, and I also, I have five employees. So my business is a lot different than a typical reseller, I guess I should say. All right. I'm going to make Dennis big and then Faith big. Let them tell you guys goodbye. And then Rod and myself will tell you what we have going on. And then we are here every week. Um, we have 34 questions we did not get to. That is why I always tell you guys to get them in early. Um, Rod will give you his spiel at the end of this, I'm sure. But here is Dennis. <laughs> well, first off, Kat, Rod. Thank you so much for having me on here. I've been looking forward to this for a while now. Um, again, I want to thank, obviously, my family, my wife, uh, everyone that has given me boxes, uh, <laughs> packing material, supported this dream that I've had. Um, if you guys didn't know, I was a police officer for years before I realized what I wanted to do You know, when I grew up, and this is it. I still jump out of bed every single morning and I cannot wait to get started in this. I've found this through part-time reselling and now I've turned it into a full-time career. So everyone that has supported me, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I would not be here doing this still three years full-time uh, next month, actually. Um, I thank you and I, I really appreciate it. Where, where can they find you? Uh, I'm on Instagram. I am on YouTube. Um, it's, uh, all the social media apps. I don't do TikTok, but, um, yeah, you can get me on YouTube. I'm, my channel is, is a work in progress. You can find some fun stuff on there. Uh, Instagram, I'm really active on, um, and, uh, Poshmark, Akari, and then eBay. It's all free King flipper, free King or free King, however you want to say it. Uh, but guys, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Perfect. Here's Faith. Oh, there I am. <laughs> Thank you so, so much, uh, Kat and Rod. We just really, really appreciate uh, you guys having us on and Paul earlier, even though he couldn't stay with us. Um, I want to try to do a few more of these things for everybody. <laughs> um, but no, thank you Yay! guys so, so much. Um, there we go. There um, if you're just joining, uh, my husband and I created an accounting software for resellers. It's called My Reseller Genie. Think of us like QuickBooks, but we only care about resellers. Um, it's a lot more affordable, give you everything that you need to track all of your sales and inventory across all selling platforms. 
and everything that you need to file your taxes too. So um, you can find us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Threads, uh, all at My Reseller Genie. And then our website is uh, www.myresellergenie.com. Thank you guys again so, so much for having us. We really, really appreciate it. Perfect. Rod, what's going on? Well, first and foremost, I'd like to thank our guests coming on here. Um, you know, Dennis is one of the first people I, I messaged when I was about to quit my job. And uh, he was worth he gave a lot of good information, so he's full of knowledge. And also, too, someone put in the chat earlier about they just signed up for QuickBooks. And has anyone used Reseller Genie and what was their feedback? And I will tell you personally from dealing, you know, QuickBooks is going to be a big corporation. Reseller Genie, you're a little mom and pop shop. But the best thing about them is I met those in person at multiple uh, reselling events. And I can tell you. In person, they are wonderful people, but also, too, is they give great customer service. And so, Holly, if you guys do consider going with them, you're not going to get the hands-on experience you will with, with you know, QuickBooks. And I personally, I've used QuickBooks for years and stuff like that, but these, they are great. So, big shout out to them. Thank you guys for coming on here. Um, I will do, I'm doing a big whatnot this Friday, guys. I'm giving away Nintendo Wii. I'm clearing out my garage. So, I'm just starting everything at five bucks. We're going to open up boxes on, on air and just blow stuff out. Um, I'm doing a Disney pin show, I think Sunday, Sunday night, uh, doing that one too as well. But also too, I just dropped a brand new video on my YouTube channel earlier today. Um, did I find a, a grail, a vintage grail hat? Maybe not, but you guys have to wait and see. Also too, check out my second channel, Flipping and Punching. Um, I'm going to put out a new video on there tomorrow. And I did start a reselling challenge. So if anyone wants to come join me on that, I'm trying to list $20,000 worth of merchandise in the month of January and over 300 items. And if I do not complete that, I will donate $500 to a local animal uh, shelter here as a punishment for myself. So you guys can follow me along that journey on flipping and punching and also come join me in that too, guys. So that's awesome. Yes, thank you to Faith and Paul, even though Paul's not here, um, and Dennis for coming on. Rod has been the co-host. I think we figured out it's just over a year. We just hit our year mark so i am happy to have rod with us next week we are having beard king picker and new jersey picker neither have been on before so two well, new guests new, for you new guys jersey, new jersey's been on before she's on last year really yeah he's on one time am i that old I mean, maybe if, I am that you old. want me to answer that cat i mean it, i mean <laughs> listen um Marsha and Mark, will you put the link for Reseller Genie? And I do have a code, guys, the Nurse Flipper. Yes. You will get a discount on your first month if you use my code and sign up for my Reseller Genie. Um, I have, I, I, Rod's making me feel really old now. Now I just can't even, <laughs> hush, Mark. Um, so, like, I, 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 can't, now I can't even talk. I put out a video, <laughs> what's today? Tuesday. I put out a video on Sunday about a hundred dollar mistake I made and I decided to honor that. And I think what I'm gonna do for Thursday is a Lisa Frank research video. We got over a hundred Lisa Frank items. We have been selling them. They sell really high, it's crazy sheets of stickers for like $25, $30 for one sheet of stickers. It is absolutely insane. So I think I'm going to do that on Thursday. I just hit 8,000 subscribers on my second channel. So if you are not following me there, catch treasure hunting. And I put a really short video out yesterday. It's only 10 minutes. The thrift store wasn't great, but the video that will be coming out next is the first one from Clearwater Beach. And I scored some amazing things. So the next three videos will be from Clearwater Beach. And then you get to watch the great ADH Dave negotiating. I have it on video. I have it on video. And it did. Oh, no, I'm not going to tell. I'm not going to tell what happened. Um, and Rod. Um, so, yeah. Hey, so what, there will be. What, yes. What, what buy was that? It was, it was when he was trying to get it. The Wizard of Oz stuff. That's what I oh, have. Oh, yes. Into, okay. The Wizard of Oz stuff. Um, <laughs> so definitely join us. We are here every Tuesday. Get your questions in early. Rod, did you tell them you'll answer all their questions? I did not. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to hit me up on my Facebook or on Instagram at Picking and Punching, and I would answer all your questions. But I am going to Animal Kingdom tomorrow, so it may be slightly delayed. So, But I will answer your questions. <laughs> 
cool. have fun at Disney. Thank yes. you guys so, so much. We wouldn't be here if it weren't for you guys. We appreciate you all coming and we will see you on the next one. Bye guys.